Hi, my name's Penny Snowball. Welcome to the eighth uh, section of a series of documentaries entitled In Search of My Mental Health. This particular section is entitled of The Process of Addiction, what it is and trying to discuss what, that, what, um, what addictions exist and uh, to understand you know, that some people can actually take drugs and not get addicted. And so just to explore that a bit more, really, um, I wonder what you had to say, what you're thinking on lines of how that actually works for people who don't, who can take drugs and who don't get addicted. To me, I don't understand that. So I remember working with this lady a long time ago and she had um, a half a bottle of wine in her fridge with a cork in it. And I just like, how can you do that? Like, why would you put it back? I just didn't weirdo. get it. What, what weird? <laughs> it's like, why, why would you do that? How can you possibly do that? It's like, I just didn't get it. Mm. I didn't get it, how anybody can just have... And I didn't understand then that maybe there was something wrong with me. I thought that they were the ones with <laughs> the problem. Mm. <laughs> why wouldn't you want to finish it? non-drinkers. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you want to finish it? My friend sort of come in and she looked in our drinks cabinet, which is sort of full of stuff. She's going, God... You must be alcoholics. I said, no, because it's still in there. <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That is a good point, mm. isn't it? It's a good point. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? What's it? I don't know. What well, is it? I, th I think it's, it's uh, a lot to do with, uh, I think, behind uh, addiction is is uh, some of the negative emotions. It's, it's the feelings of how I feel about myself. Or how I feel about other things. It could be lots of any of the negative. It could be anger. It could be low self-esteem. It's quite the most common things are low self-esteem, anger, um, not feeling good about <coughs> yourself, uh, lack of confidence, um, and those sort of things. And and people find that when they use some some sort of um, substance, that helps them to improve that. Now. To start off with, of course, this is just an improvement thing, and it's like having, you know, Dutch courage. It's having mm. having something to make me feel like I can do something. And and but uh, the problem with most drugs is that the, the more you use it, the more you need, and and so therefore, in the end, that can build up to the point where you've got to have it before you can do anything. I was on a drug awareness course, and uh, the facilitator was talking about people using different types of drugs and maybe people try heroin and they're sort of hmm yes it makes me feel safe and warm and loved and yeah that's okay but i feel pretty safe and warm and loved anyway so you know i'll probably take it or leave it whereas people who have never felt safe they've never felt secure and warm and loved and valued would lunge at that because it's a special precious feeling that they've never experienced before and they want more of it wow and you know he was saying the same about sort of coke and yeah. people who which would tie in with your self-esteem thing really yeah. you know people try a line of coke and they think oh yeah chatty self-confident that's quite nice but not really lacking in that anyway or if people are sort of cripplingly shy and have awful low self-esteem mm. and don't speak because they're worried about what people will think of them, mm. they'd lunge at that drug and want it all the time because it gives them that thing that they feel is missing from themselves, right. from their very being. Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? And, and that, that quite often happens uh, from teenage on, onwards, doesn't it? Before that, and one of the one of the most common addictions in younger people is is anorexia, and that's where young mainly girls but some boys now start to deal with the problems, the home problems they have, by uh, using food. Because. Because they can't cope with the emotional stuff that's going on for them. Something they can control. Yeah. And very often it's about their self-esteem, it's about their self-image, about how they feel about themselves. And, mm. and this emphasised by obviously modern day media and the way they project how you should look. And, mm. these, uh, uh, and, and most people, because they don't sit on the sofa looking at themselves, they actually don't know how they really look. They, mm. they look in a mirror and they see whatever they see in a mirror, but it's never really a true image. Mm. It's not how other people see them. Mm. And, and so therefore, 
they they get this bad or, or this negative image of themselves and 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 uh, they want to change that and they, normally it's they feel they're too fat and so therefore they want to mm. change that so they they, they uh, but the trouble is they can get as you said you know look in the mirror and this thin person sees a fat person they see that and and so therefore the, their dieting's not good enough so they have to do less they do more exercise they mm. get into the the full blown thing and also, if you think that you're a pretty worthless person and fat, yeah. you can control the fat bit. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so that's one little part of your horrible worthless existence that you can do something about. Yeah. You know, it's sort of one sort of small part of the world that you can control. Amazing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I know also that I had OCD. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I had really big OCD as a child. I used to have to have all my pencils really sharp, everything in line, my beds neat, everything was in order on a Sunday night, on a Sunday night only. And then for the rest of the week it became chaotic and then I have to tidy it up again. And this is just like feast or famine, you know, it's one extreme to the other. And the OCD is apparently on the rise, especially yes. in young children. Yeah. I, a friend of mine's son is really struggling with it at the moment, he's having a lot of support with it. and. It's, I, I get OCD badly if I'm stressed and I'm leaving the house. I have to keep coming back and checking the cooker over and over again or checking my door. And it, I notice it gets worse when I'm anxious, mm -hmm. when I feel things are out of control or if I've left the cooker on or I've done this. But the other thing is like the, there's so many other addictions, like the process addictions. When you, take, when you take, put down the drugs, put down the alcohol there's the codependency there's the sex and love addiction because often codependency if it's undealt with can lead people back into relapses but often, often it's, the, it's the cause of the addiction as well people yeah. can't deal with relationships yeah. so they get addicted yeah. and then when they stop using that codependency that problem is still there yeah. and the inability to deal co appropriately yeah. with the relationships so you get this swing OCD and, and, and codependency are two very similar um, problems mm -hmm. because they are both very difficult to deal with mm -hmm. and if you deal with the actual substance then you're left with OCD mm -hmm. and, and then of course that's very difficult to deal with and, and codependency is very difficult to deal with so how do I deal with it? I go back to the old way of dealing with it which is use the substance again. Because at you know, the core of most addictions, they say, is sex and love addiction or love addiction and codependency. They're, yeah. they're, you know, they're entwined. Relationships. Relationships. And then the food. The food is so connected. Yeah. Food is very much connected. Yeah. To, the, to all of that. And I, think, I think we, we, we're brought up being taught to use food because our parents used food to keep us quiet. They give us sweets to keep us quiet, they give us sweets to make us be good. If you're good, Johnny, I'll buy you a chocolate bar or something mm. like that. And, and, and that problem makes us think, if we eat this, we're being good. That's fascinating, isn't it, really? Messages given when you're, when yeah. you're how old? One, two? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true, even as, yeah, as a very young, young, young child, you know, have this and yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I hadn't really thought about that at all, actually. Yeah, and also the comforting. There's a comforting in, in the, well, that's the first, that's the first um, Full of sugar. Comfort. Sugar makes you feel good. Mm. Sugar is a, is a very comforting food. It's in, in alcohol, it's in uh, a lot of foods, you know, so it's something that makes you feel good. Mm. It's even with savoury, though, as well, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's that comfort, isn't it? It's the, yeah. it's a, yeah, no, the sugar can give you a high, can't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But then it becomes just eating, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. When it's just an eating thing, I, eat, I feel better if I eat. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I, I, I know I, I, I can get into that comfort eating. Yeah, same. I have to really watch yeah. it. I have yeah. to really watch it. I have an eating plan now. I have to. If I step out of it, it's, it's, I don't feel comfortable anymore. That's good.